do an example where we push a box. We're going to push with a constant force of 95 newtons so that the velocity of the box, you know, with friction and all that sort of stuff working together, is a constant velocity. So that the velocity is constant. Now, something about this box is that the box has a mass of 16.2. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, mass, the, the box is pushed a displacement, rather, of 16.0 meters. Let's say that it just goes to the east. So here's the question I want to find out is, how much work is done by the pusher? Whoever the pusher is. We've got our free body diagram, same as we did in dynamics. The free body diagram hasn't disappeared. We've got our free body diagram. We're going to say that we've got a, an F applied. And of course, we have our normal force and we have our gravity. That stuff hasn't disappeared either. And apparently, if we're going at a constant velocity, we also have our force due to friction, kinetic friction specifically. But we're also told that we have this, dis this displacement time from time one to time two of 16.0 meters. So I want to figure out how much work was done. We say work is equal to force times displacement, oops, delta D, times cosine of theta. And I can plug in my values. My force applied here is 95.0 newtons. My displacement is 16.0 meters. But when I do cosine of theta, let's take a look at this. My displacement is to the right, like this. My applied force by the pusher is also to the right. What's the angle between those two vectors? Zero. 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 So cosine of zero. We said it before. We'll say it again. What's cosine of zero equal to? One. Beautiful. So those two forces are what we call collinear. Anytime you got two forces that are collinear, that is in the same direction, you got a cosine of zero. <clears throat> All right, so 95 times 16. Um, should be sometime, somewhere around 1,500, is it? Uh, 1,520? Okay. 1,520. Now, what we didn't get to was the... Yeah. Is, that, is that what I said? Mm -hmm. Okay, 1,520. Now, the units for work is joules. So I want to take a minute. I want to come back to that equation that we were looking at before. I'm not, not going to beat around the bush here. It is work in joules, but I want to figure out what joules really are. Is this working for you guys? Can you see okay? Yeah? yeah? Okay. What are joules? Oh, little cockeyed. What are joules? So let's go to the equation. So starting with the equation, we say that work is equal to force times displacement times cosine of theta. I want to take a look at just the units, not the variables or any numbers or anything like that. The units for force are newtons. And the units for displacement are meters. Now the units for, for angle, they don't contribute. There is no units for angles. We measure them in degrees, but they really don't contribute to the units. So I'm going to disregard that for now. Um, we know from the past that Newton's actually really breaks down into kilogram meters per second squared. Now that's a definition that we, we came up with for the short form we call Newton's. We, we know that's really uh, from a composite set of units, a calculated set of units. And the meters also carries through. Now some people, and they're not wrong, but some people 
talk about energy as Newton meters. It's not wrong. It's totally correct. It's just not very common. And then there's other people that say, well, really, let's break down the Newtons into its composite parts and call it kilogram meter squared per second squared. And that's okay, too. It's not wrong. It's just kind of long, and we're a little bit lazy, maybe, in the way that we like to write, and that takes a little while to get out. So, like so many things, named after famous physicist, Joule, we got the unit of energy J, joule. So you don't have to write kilogram meter squared per second squared. However, if you do see kilogram meter squared per second squared somewhere, you should be able to say, oh, immediately, I recognize that, that's a joule. Or a newton meter, say, oh, immediately, I recognize that, that's a joule. Really, it's just maybe in a different form, right? But it's still equivalent units. Okay, we've just defined it that way. Let's try another problem.